What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone. This morning, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we, I don't know if you know this or not, uh, because we don't talk about it enough on this channel, but a few times a year, I go out to Denver, Colorado, and I team up with Texas Toast Guitars in Denver, and we teach people how to wind pickups. So they teach people how to build guitars. You can start from a block of wood and end at the end of the week with a fully functioning guitar. Uh, it's really cool. Most of their classes, you just like bring your own parts and, and some of them are all parts included. There's various, you know, scales to it. I'll leave a link to their stuff in the description below to where you can learn how to sign up for one of their courses because it's really, really fun. They have some online stuff too. Um, but a few times a year, I go out there and we kind of like, we kind of team up to where you build the guitar with them, but also you learn how to wind pickups at the same time. Uh, I'm going out there, I leave uh, Wednesday, so it'll be kind of fun because we're going to do this next week, I'm driving out. Uh, and in order to do that, I need to pack up a bunch of stuff and take it with me because we need everything to wind pickups. And I thought it would be a fun opportunity um, to show you all the things that you would need to wind pickups. Uh, before we get going, I want to thank my Patreon supporters and my YouTube join folks down there. Uh, we have monthly hangouts. We have a bunch of stuff we do on Patreon. I really appreciate everybody because, you know, guitar brands don't send us a bunch of free stuff because, you know, some of the stuff we say about it sometimes. Uh, but we like to keep our content honest and to the point. And because of that, we really appreciate your support on the channel using the links below, going to dylantoxtone.com, buying pickups, as well as uh, for the YouTube channel itself, the Patreon and the YouTube member support down there is what pays for all the like guitar reviews and stuff. So thank you so much for all that. Okay, so first things first, you'd think we'd talk about the winder. We will get to that, I promise. Uh, but actually, there's a couple other things that we need before that. Here we go. This is your simple, right there, two-ton arbor press. You can just get these at Home Depot. Well, Harbor Freight probably is the best place to get it. You can get them from Amazon. Uh, now, I'm not gonna take this with me. I actually bought one that I keep in Colorado because it's so heavy to lug around. This would be what you need to press together your various bobbins for, you know, making this kind of stuff. I'll show you a cool little tool that we have to do that with. I have these various blocks that I made up for templates. So like this goes in between here to set the depth properly. So when you press it together, it's the right depth. And then this one goes on top to press the, the top down, uh, that kind of stuff. These are some, and then Chris at Texas Toast made this one for me for screwing screws into humbuckers so it doesn't bottom out or you know, P90s for example, engrave my name in it, kind of cool. Uh, so these are some tools that I use for pressing bobbins together because this is what we need before we make the pickups. As I do this, I'm literally putting this into a to-go pile so that we don't forget it. This is my Mojo Tone pickup winding machine. I actually have three of these. Uh, if you wanna wind pickups, this is it sounds like it's a little bougie because they're about 600 bucks. But if this is something that you want to do, I recommend buying this thing. I'll leave a link to as much of this stuff as I can find in the description. Uh, we do get affiliate dollars from those links. It does support the channel like we were mentioning earlier. Uh, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. I have had many winders. I've had the Shatton style. I've had direct drive motor style. I've had all kinds of stuff. I have three of these. I have a spare in the drawer down there. I have this one and then I keep one out in Colorado because I'll bring this one with me uh, and then I will also, or my spare, and then I will also have the one out in Colorado uh, and we'll have two winders going at the same time to teach everybody. Um, it, it is speed controlled. It, you can control it with a foot pedal. That It is easy to keep tension. The motor is very, very smooth. It's relatively quiet for what it is. Uh, I have literally done thousands of wines, thousands of pickups on this winder and the one in the drawer. Um, thousands, thousands. This is a great machine. Uh, this is one of those things where 
that's why we're spending a little time on this. If, if you want to do this, there are cheaper ways to do it. Like you can, you know, make one out of a sewing machine, which was actually my first one 10 years ago. Um, you can make one out of, you know, all kinds of things. There's plans on the internet. There's various things to cheap out on this, but it's just like playing a cheap guitar. If you play some $69 Glary, you're not going to get the good experience that you're going to get. And you're probably going to give up sooner than later on the hobby or on the process of making pickups. So get a good winder. This is definitely worth it. Okay, let's talk soldering. So uh, this is another thing that I have two of, and I'll explain why in a minute. This is my Heiko uh, 888D soldering iron. Uh, it's about $120 or so. Like I said, I'll leave links to it in the description because the prices change all the time. Um, I have two of them. The reason I have two of them is because we have a lead-free setup and we have a leaded setup. I use Kester 6040 leaded solder 90% of the time. And about 10% of the time, I use the Kester lead-free solder. But to keep ROHS compliant for some countries and some clients that we have, we have to have two completely separate setups and they can't touch each other because of cross-contamination. So that's why we have two. This iron is amazing. Again, uh, I'll leave a link to like a $40 option by Weller that is, it's the orange one that everybody knows that I've talked about in the past video, in past videos. It's great. You put it on three and a half, you can solder anything you want on a guitar. I used one for years and years and years. I upgraded to this one just because of volume. We we're doing so much volume. And what I like about this is um, when you put it on like a pickup cover or something that needs to be hotter, like a base plate of a Telecaster, for example, this senses inside it the heat soak and it actually ups the current uh, as you're going. So you don't have to actually mess with the temperature. I solder at 700 degrees Fahrenheit um, and that's just kind of the way I do it. And I've been doing it that way for years. Uh, this is a great tip, uh, a great uh, handle. It, it works awesome. This is my favorite soldering iron. Like I said, I have two of them. Uh, multimeter, let's talk about measuring equipment. I use a Fluke. 115. Uh, you can use any kind of multimeter you want. This one's about 150 bucks or something. I can't remember. I've had this thing for years now. I also have some cheaper ones. Any multimeter that works is good. Uh, as long as you use the same one every time to maintain standard in your shop, use the same meter every time so that all your comparison measurements are the same. Don't switch meters. Uh, that's probably more important than what meter you get because if they measure a little different, that's okay. As long as within your shop, you know that you're doing exactly the same thing every time. Two other meters that I use, uh, I use this meter to measure capacitance. Uh, I'll leave a link to it, it's really cheap. Um, and I also use this to measure inductance of coils because that's an important measurement. Again, this is a really cheap one. People in the comments will say it measures at the wrong frequency, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's fine. But, and you could say, well, it doesn't give you an accurate measurement or a standard measurement with these other meters that are measuring it at a different frequency, whatever. I don't care about any of that. In my shop, what I care about is the consistency between each of my pickups. So when I measure, you know, across thousands of pickups so that they're within the standards that we expect. Um, if you compare it on your meter, if I gave you a measurement and you compared it on your meter and it measured at a different frequency, um, chances are that the measurement will be different because of the meter standard. I don't care about that because we don't publish those numbers for various reasons. Uh, we could get into that in a whole nother video if you want. We could talk about that or we could talk about it during the podcast, why I don't publish those, those measurements. That being said... I have a consistency within my shop and that's all I care. When we make a set, when we make this many pickups and they all come out the same, that's all I care. So people can criticize that all they want, but I don't care. This is another tool. This is not necessarily required required, but it is kind of nice to have. This is a Gauss meter. So it measures in Tesla and in Gauss to measure the magnetic strength of your pickups. Now, I really like this one. Uh, again, there is all kinds of dollars that you can spend on these things. I'll leave a link to this in the description. These are more expensive than a multimeter, not as expensive as this one, 
Uh, they're more expensive than a cheap multimeter, but they are definitely worth having, especially if you are doing any kind of experimenting with making pickups, trying to understand different magnet strengths and stuff. This is very, very helpful to have. Also, I'll show you in a minute why it's important to have one of these if you are magnetizing your pickups in-house and you're kind of doing it the budget way, which is totally acceptable. I've done it that way for a long, I did it that way for a long time, but I had this to double check my work. Okay, let's talk magnetization of pickups. This is just, this is the Mojo Tone one. I'll leave even a cheaper alternative to this in the description. Basically, you just get one of these cheap vices from Amazon, which I'll leave a link for. And from Stumac, you get these magnets that you can stick in there. I'll leave a link to those. And for about 30 or 40 bucks, you have a reliable way to magnetize pickups. I did thousands of pickups this way. The reason I switched is because from this method is because I wanted um, a more accurate way to do it at a higher volume more quickly. The way you do this is you put the, the pickup between here and you pass it between here, okay? And then when you get done, you measure it with the gauss meter that I just showed you, the green one. Sometimes, if you don't do it properly, you can have weak ends, weak ends, like, you know, it'll be a little weaker on the end. It won't be to the consistent strength every time until you do a few hundred of them and really understand um, what the strength is, all those things. So in a, in the interest of being more consistent, I bought a cool toy. This guy right here, this is a uh, magnetizer. There's two big transformers in here and then it magnetizes anything that you put in between here. So if you put this pickup in between here, this one's not magnetized, see, not at all. So all we do is we just go like this and it's magnetized. That's it, one second and it's 100% consistent all the way across. Now this thing's not putting off that current when you don't have, it's a momentary switch and yes, okay, whatever, it's gonna ruin my Apple Watch, whatever, but not uh, for that one second that I showed you. If I have a bunch of pickups to do, I'll take all of, you know, my rings off and my watch and take the phone out of my pocket and all that stuff and be super careful. Uh, I think it says, if you have a pacemaker, you can't use this thing 10, 10 feet away. So we try to be really safe about that, but I, I you know, just showing you for one, it's no big deal. All right, one of the things we need to talk about is the crock pot. So this is the, just a little cheap crock pot I got off of Amazon. We use paraffin beads um, and they work amazing. And I've used this on low, it takes about an hour to warm up every day. And I've used this for years. Actually, this is my second one. I've gone through two of them. A lot of diehard pickup people and YouTube comment gurus give me a hard time about using a crock pot um, saying that I need to pressure pot pickups and that kind of stuff. I just don't believe in it. Um, I don't like doing that. I think that it changes things and I don't want to change things. I like the way my pickups sound. Um, and we've gotten consistent results doing it the exact same way for about 10 years now that I really, really appreciate uh, the qualities of. Uh, people give me a hard time for thinking that I can't do volume with this. Uh, but I mean, we do hundreds of pickups every month with that little crock pot. Okay, let's get on to the important stuff. Now I know we think the winder and the soldering iron and the meters and all that stuff is important, but those are the things that you think of. The things that you don't think of are the things that are gonna catch you out and you're gonna be like, oh wow. And you're gonna spend a bunch of money trying to accumulate. We have to talk about strippers, okay? Not like a bounce around kind, but I mean like the kind that you strip wire with. Um, my good man, Don, from the comments section, and he's become a good friend of mine, saw me using my teeth and he's a dentist and he didn't like that. So he bought me this stripper set that I use sometimes for humbucker style wires and some other thinner wires. It's a really sweet stripper that I have around that I like. Uh, I use just a cheap old normal you know, multi-stripper, this thing's got miles on it, man. I've had this thing for probably 20 years. It's 
probably needs to be replaced right about now, but I can't find one that has the right, I like how it feels, so <laughs> I don't replace it. This is the secret in the arsenal. Leslie calls this the dinosaur stripper, as you can see why. And what we use this for is multiple stripping of humbucker wires. Now you can take all four wires from a humbucker, put it in here, and strip all four of them at the same time. There are fancy machines to do this. My buddy Tim McNelly at McNelly Pickups has one where you just put the wire in there and it automatically strips the ends off. But I found that this thing works awesome and I use it all the time. We could do, I don't know, 20 humbuckers a day and I'm just sitting there, ba-bam, 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 doing it. It's awesome. This thing's about like 13 bucks or something on Amazon. I'll leave a link to it. And this dude right here is one of the top secret things that makes my life easier. Uh, we built a bunch of loaded pick guards. So I have previously uh, selected sizes of wrenches for, you know, pots and string winders. And of course we have, this is where I keep all my little hand tools. One of my YouTube viewers sent me this cool little caddy with my name engraved in it. So thank you for that, sir. Uh, one of the other kind of priority things you got to have is one of these little Shatton magnet uh, polarizing dudes so that when you magnetize a pickup, you can tell which way the magnet is polarized. This one's had some miles on it. I ran it over with my desk chair, so any minute now the little thing's going to fall out, but... She keeps on plugging, so you gotta have one of those as well. I'll leave a link to this in the description too. Uh, for humbuckers, I have a perfectly ground little screwdriver because those Philister screws are a particular size that I have. This is for finishing up after the covers are on to do it by hand. This actually comes from my former life. See, it's uh, ground down to fit a pilot screw on a key and carburetor. Also, uh, a normal screw gun. This is the screw gun that we use to actually put screws into humbuckers. You gotta have the right size though so that you don't sh slip out of them. Otherwise you'll slip out, you'll slam your finger, you'll have all, I mean, I've done it. You'll have all kinds of trouble. Uh, make sure you've got something with some good torque and good low uh, speed control. Otherwise, uh, to get them started and to do it without, like I said, slipping off and damaging the pickup or damaging your thumb, um, it's a trick. When we teach people how to wind pickups, Putting the screws into a P90 is probably one of the most difficult things. And I actually end up doing it for people a lot of times because it takes practice to do. So just make sure that you get the right size um, screwdriver. So all this stuff will be going in a Pelican case or two. And we will be taking it to Colorado with us uh, later this week. Last time I forgot the power supply for the extra winder. So I'll make sure that I do not forget it this time. If you want to learn to wind your own pickups. One of the things you can do is watch all the videos on our channel. That'll get you a lot of the way. You can come to one of these workshops or uh, maybe we should do an online one too. What do you think? Anyway, uh, just get this stuff and start. Just learn. Uh, I encourage anybody. I mean, I know I make pickups for a living. People are like, I can't believe you're telling people how to do this because it's going to cost you business. Mm, it doesn't. But... I think everybody should learn how to do it. It's a skill. It's a really cool thing to learn. I think it's really neat. And if you want to do this, there's a couple of things that I would tell you. Get off of the internet. Get out of all of the forums. Get out of everything. Stop following all of it. Use it to put a tool list together. Use it to get the basic knowledge together. You know, like how pickups work in general, right? But once you get this far, once you have parts sitting on your desk ready to be made into pickups, um, then stop doing all that stuff. Just do it. Get a notebook. I've got a notebook over there with a bunch of various specs and everything that I've ever tried over the last 10 years. I document all of it. And once you do that, start experimenting. How strong should the magnets be? How many wines should be on it? How tall should each of these be? The gap between here. Experiment with all those things. There's no wrong, there's no right. I will tell you right now that none of my pickups are 100% on any kind of industry standard of anything because we have experimented and played around for so long that we've kind of just made our own thing. 
This is something that I encourage you to do. People will tell you that you're doing it wrong. People will tell you, tell me that I'm doing it wrong, that I won't have consistent results, but I can guarantee you that I do have consistent results. And they're good, the stuff's good. I mean, we make good stuff. I'm, I'm really proud of what we do here. And you can be proud of what you do too. And I think that if you just kind of get out of all of those groups, use your imagination. If you saw something here and you're like, eh, I don't like that tool, I would get this one instead, put that in the comments. Help each other in the community in a positive way, but not like, you know, this is the only one way to do it, because there isn't, there's a million different ways. I know that I do things differently from other pickup builders, but I don't care because we have really good stuff here. And I think that imagination is what drives this forward. Don't worry so much about, like I said, doing it the way I do it or the way somebody else does it. Just do it. I'll leave a link to as much of this stuff as I can find in the description. It does help out the channel. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. As we go out to Colorado this week and we do some stuff, uh, well, our podcast will be here tomorrow, but uh, we will be on the road Thursday for our live stream. And as we go out to Colorado next week, you're gonna see some content from out there. I'm really excited about working with folks that I've never worked with before to teach them how to wind pickups. It's gonna be awesome. We have like 100% success rate so far. Everybody has made pickups that have worked and sounded good in their guitars. We're doing strats this time, so it's gonna be kind of fun. We're gonna build loaded pick guards. We're gonna do all that stuff. If you have any questions about any of it, get in the comments and ask. Uh, and I'll leave a link to Texas Toast where you can learn about how to become part of this community that we're doing all this stuff. Uh, it's not a plug for that. This is more I wanted to show you this stuff, but I think it's a cool thing. And if you wanna be a part of it, I'll show you. Uh, they didn't pay me or anything. It's, it's not about that. It's just, it's fun and I'm excited to go do it. Thanks for hanging out and we will see you tomorrow for the podcast.